Hello and welcome to our Basics to Pro Tools video guide. My name is Rishi Daftur and today we will be discussing basic operations and features to get you up and going in Pro Tools as quickly as possible. This video is intended to go over some of the fundamentals of Pro Tools to minimize the learning curve on using the software. It should not be used as an all-inclusive video tutorial and nothing can replace spending quality time with the software program. Let's get started. Pro Tools is located in the dock and is marked by a blue circle with a white swoosh. When you launch the application, the Quick Start dialog appears. This dialog allows you to set up the basic parameters of your session. Here, you will be able to choose the file format, sampling rate, and bit depth. Once you have filled out these fields, press OK. After pressing OK, a save dialog appears where you can title and choose a location to save your session. The next important parameters to check are the I.O. or input-output configuration, which can be found under the Setup menu. This tells Pro Tools where to receive input from and where to send output to with respect to your Pro Tools hardware. The correct I.O. for the three studios can be found on the Digital Media Commons C-Tools site, as well as in the documentation binder in each room. Once you have finished all of the setup, we can move on to actually using the software. You can create a new track by going to the Track menu and selecting New. There are many different kinds of tracks in Pro Tools, including Audio, MIDI, AUX, Instrument, and Master Fader tracks. The shortcut to create new tracks is Command-Shift-N. You can also create a click track from the track menu. It is often useful to have musicians record to a metronome, also known as a click track. You can create a click track by going to the track menu and then selecting click track. Next we will look at the two main windows in Pro Tools. There are two windows that show you what is happening in the session. The edit window and the mix window. We are going to go over the mix window first. This is similar to a hardware mixer in looks and in function. The standard channel strip in Pro Tools contains inserts for dynamics processing and effects, sends, I.O., Automation, Groups, Panning, and Fader Level. All of the same information can also be found in the Edit window. Located at the top of the Edit window is the Transport. You can also go to the Window menu and select Transport to bring up a floating transport window. The Transport allows you to see where you are in the session, Play, Stop, Rewind, Fast Forward, and Record. To record onto an audio track, you must first record enable the track, and then press record and play. Once a track is record enabled, you can also record by pressing 3 on the number pad, F12, or command spacebar. Setting up the console to send signal to a track in Pro Tools was covered in your training, but in a nutshell, you want to assign your channel to send signal to a bus and then set the interface input of Pro Tools to the same number as that bus. While tracking, you will often want to conduct multiple takes of a section. One workflow built into Pro Tools for this is Playlists. Next to each track in the edit window is an arrow. If you hold it down, there is an option to create a new playlist. Once a new playlist is created, you can record again. You can then scroll through the different playlists and put together one great take comprised of sections from each of the different takes. This is known as comping a track. Once you have recorded a track, you may find it necessary to do some editing. There are three editing tools located at the top of the edit window. There's the trimmer, the selector, and the grabber tool. They can be accessed using the F6, F7, and F8 keys respectively. The trimmer tool is used to change beginning or end times of regions. The selector tool is used to select a specific part of the timeline that you may want to edit. The Grabber tool is used to select entire regions to edit. Above the tools, there is a rectangular box and when pressed, activates the Multi-Tool, also known as the Smart Tool. The Multi-Tool is all three edit tools combined in one. Depending on what section of an audio region your mouse is over, a different tool is active. 
If you place the mouse at the end of a region, the trimmer tool becomes active. On the bottom half of the region that is not an edge, the grabber tool becomes active. If you move to the top half, the selector tool becomes active. If you go to the upper left or right corner of a region, the option for a fade appears. At the bottom left or right corner of a region, you can use the crossfade tool to fade between two adjacent regions. The multi-tool is a great way to speed up workflow or just simply reduce mouse clicks. Once you understand the editing tools, it is important to understand the different edit modes. The edit modes are located in the top left corner of the edit window. The most important edit modes for basic operations are grid, slip, and shuffle. If you recorded your audio to a click track, editing using grid mode can be extremely useful. It allows you to make edits and move regions on the grid so that everything is always in time with the click track. Slip mode is the exact opposite of grid mode. In slip mode, you have freedom to make edits anywhere on the timeline and are not constrained to the grid. Finally, shuffle mode snaps regions to other regions. This means that if you cut a section of audio, there will be no gap. The two regions will be next to each other. The same is true when moving regions around. They will snap to the closest region. Other useful features helpful for editing include zooming, separating regions, and creating fades. It is often very useful to zoom in and out to see different parts of your session better. Pro Tools comes with five different preset zooms that you can use and they are located in the top left hand corner of the edit window. You can also access them using the 1 through 5 buttons on your keyboard in command focus mode. Command focus mode allows you to use the shortcuts without using modifier keys. You can enter command focus mode by pressing this AZ icon in the top right corner of the edit window. You can also zoom in and out horizontally using command and left bracket to zoom out and command right bracket to zoom in. Separating regions is extremely useful in editing audio. It allows you to split audio to composite tracks, move certain parts of regions around, and slice regions that need trimming. Once regions have been separated, it is usually necessary to add a fade or a crossfade in order to prevent clicks and pops from happening when the audio is played. You can create a fade using the multi-tool as shown earlier, or you can highlight the length of the fade and use the F key in command focus mode. Another useful feature while editing, tracking, and mixing is using groups. You may have noticed that all of our edits have affected all of the drum tracks. This is because they are grouped together. You can group multiple different tracks together to perform changes on many tracks at the same time. To group tracks, you simply select the tracks that you want to group together and press Command G and the groups dialog will appear. In that dialog, you can name the group and change the attributes of the group. Once you create a group, you can turn the group on and off by utilizing the groups area of the edit window. If the groups window is not present, all you have to do is press this arrow in the bottom left hand corner to make them appear. Groups also have a command focus mode, which will allow you to turn groups on and off by pressing the letter that is next to each group. We mentioned the insert section of the channel strip in the mixer window earlier. The biggest use for inserts are adding plugin effects such as equalizers and compressors to tracks. To add a plugin, all you have to do is press the arrow next to the insert and you will be presented with a window that allows you to select the plugins. This applies the effect you choose to the track. The last feature that we will discuss is automation. Automation is used to change properties of a track over time, such as volume or panning. You can bring up the automation lanes for a track by clicking on the property that you want to change from the track view options in the edit window. After that, all you have to do to automate is create anchor points and move them around using the grabber tool. Thank you for watching this video on Pro Tools Basics. I hope that it was helpful and that you can now use the program with more ease. Bye for now.